But, you know, Rafi, let, let me ask you, I mean, right now we are seeing some positive upward movements with, with gold and silver. Do you think this is going to be sustainable through 2023? And, and I guess especially with, with the things that we're talking about here as well. Yeah, I do think it'll be sustainable. Uh, and a, on a technical, on a, from a technical standpoint, I'm seeing something very interesting in the paper silver markets, uh, meaning all the all the funds that purportedly say that they own silver and you can own a piece of paper, a, a certificate that says you own part of that, whether that's an ETF or some unallocated account somewhere um, in some bank like the Perth Mint or whatever. It's all it's all the same paper silver. So those inv those silver investments and gold also. Uh, they have been liquidating their physical because it seems that people are no longer interested, at least not like they were before, in uh, investing in paper silver funds to get exposure to the silver price, which means what is moving the silver price? It's the physical buyers this time because uh, the paper buyers just aren't there. So usually at the end of a move is when the paper people come in and push it up and you see this like short vertical move at the end of a, of a bull run. We're not seeing that now at all. So I yeah I think uh, I think w this move is very sustainable. Doesn't mean there won't be down days or down weeks or whatever, but it, the trend is going to be higher uh, from here. And um, the, there could be like at at the next deflationary crisis, which will be short and acute. That's when you could see uh, I I could see uh, gold and silver taking a huge uh, a huge uh, dump down you know, very temporarily, just like we saw in March 2020 or or September to October 2008. Something very quick and scary. I, I think that'll be the last one. There's a lot I don't understand about it. I'm, I'm not like inside. I don't really know what's going on in the vaults or who really, who the gold, the gold and silver really belongs to. Um, but every time there's something big that happens, I do report on it. And the last thing I saw Somebody bought uh, like 1,200 contracts of spot gold, meaning go not not futures gold that you that you can roll over, but spot gold that you're saying, give me delivery now, because when you buy spot gold, you're risking delivery uh, because it's within the delivery window. So somebody bought like 1,223 contracts and took delivery on something like 94% uh, of them on the next day. Uh, who was that? What was that? Why were they doing it? Um, somebody wants a lot of gold. Uh, could it be a, a hedge fund? Could it be a sovereign? Could be anybody. Uh, but those those uh, moves you don't see very often. And uh, we have a delivery day coming up for silver, I think, next month. Uh, we'll see what happens. And I've, I, I see that uh, registered silver supplies are headed down again since, um, since around late November. They've been heading down again. Uh, we're at 33 million ounces. And uh, let's see if we can get lower. And uh, who knows? So with that story that you just told us about gold, that kind of blends into what you were just saying about this time around, it's the physical buyers who are coming in. Yeah, I guess the move. Uh, what's responsible for gold moving from 1618 to uh, now 1923? I remember the number because 1923 is the 2011 highs. So that number's kind of burned in my memory. I remember that that era. Um, so we're now at the 2011 highs. What's been What's been driving that if it's not the paper buyers? It's got to be the physical buyers. I mean, uh, you know, talk to talk to the bullion dealers, talk to Andy Sheckman. The sales are up, and premiums have headed down, but they haven't headed down as fast as the spot price is headed up, which means that demand for physical is still ri still rising. Because otherwise, you'd see premiums fall faster than the spot than the spot price rises. Um, so we're not we're not at you know silver squeeze levels uh, yet, but we're going to get back there. And once we do, I don't think there's going to be anything left to buy, because if if bullion dealers, if the futures market isn't functioning, then bullion dealers can't hedge their supply with uh, with futures. And then what what's going to happen to them? They're going to stop selling. If they're going to stop selling, nobody can buy. Uh, and then what I think is going to happen at that point is from the end the end game from that side of the universe will be bullion dealers becoming basically banks. And saying you want gold and silver, so uh, collateralize your this property, that property, and we'll lend you, and you can use money, and then uh, we'll charge interest on it. They're gonna be they're gonna turn into banks overnight. When fiat's worthless, they're they're gonna be they're gonna be trading physical for other physical, and the, the you know just like a bank does, it gives a mortgage on your house or your property, or uh, or you know or if you if you own silver, you can you you might be able to do deposit it with them and they'll give you either a blockchain backed thing or a or a paper certificate for something and then you can use that as money 
So uh, it, it, hopefully the bullion dealers will come together and figure out what substitute to be is, to be issuing for their silver. Charge charge somebody a, you know a little bit of a convenience fee for giving them a silver or gold substitute for their physical, and then they become a, a normal bank, just like any bank. Um, don't get too excited over any one move because it's going to get very volatile this year. The trend will be up. Don't try to trade and keep your emotional balance. Always have enough gold and silver now that you won't panic if it moves up really fast and always have enough cash now that you won't panic if it moves down really fast. Okay. Hey, Rafi, just uh, one more question. What is your plan when we, let's say we go through this transition where, where these currencies are all getting kind of messed up and then we will resort to looking at things like silver and gold? I mean, what is your plan? Are, are you actually looking to where we may have to barter with it to, to buy and spend with it? Um, for, well, bar it's when you're using gold and silver, you're not bartering. You're using money. Uh, so uh, we call it barter because we're not used to exchanging a physical thing for another physical thing. It's a, but it's not barter. Um, so what is my plan? I don't have a, a grand laid out plan of every step of, of everything. Um, I, I put a lot of my faith in God, which is my main plan. doesn't mean I'm not preparing, but it means like, uh, you know, I look at, I'm not preparing every single step because I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just, I, ha I have, you know, I have real money, uh, some of it stored away, some of it with me, uh, you know, not much with me because it's dangerous, but enough to, you know, last a few months. Um, and, you know, I've, I'm growing vegetables in my backyard, I have chickens that lay eggs, just trying to cover the basic, you know, basis. I live in an area where there's farms all around me. Uh, and cows walking around and, uh, you know, sometimes in minefields and they get blown up, but, you know, that's a different story. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, I, uh, in, in northern Israel, there's a lot of mines here from the, the old wars that have never been cleared, but, you know, the cows do that for us sometimes. So uh, I'm, just try I'm just trying to stay away from the population centers and doing, doing things that are not, you know, so I'm not looking for a bug out place or being paranoid for everything. I'm trying to get to know the people who I need to know. Who am I going to need to contact? This guy owns a farm here. I want to be able to call him, put his number in my cell phone. Just have the basics set up. The question is when the dollar does collapse, I mean, you're, you're, you're trying to picture a world where gradually the world is weaned off the U.S. dollar um, slowly and in, 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 in a healthy way where countries can gradually transition off of this thing. I don't see that happening. I see they're, they're starting to now, yes, but there's going to be a point where they hit some kind of cliff where the next step down is just going to be straight down. Um, just like uh, the, 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 right now the money supply is shrinking slowly and we see the bubble slowly deflating, that's true. Price inflation on the consumer level is trending down a little bit and things seem to be deflating in a nice orderly even pace, but it's not, that's not going to last because that never happens. So at the point where that cliff is reached, um, all the countries that are trying to wean themselves off the dollar through alternative SWIFT systems and alternative pay payment systems, they're going to have to get moving. And they're going to have to abandon all their dollars very quickly, and that's when the entire thing just falls. So the question is, what system will they have in place in the, in the interim? I don't think they're ready, which is why I think that global trade is going to have to, at least in the immediate aftermath of this endgame, is going to have to resort to actual physical gold and silver coins for a time until, a, until an alternate system can be rebuilt that will be backed by these coins because in the, in the initial stages, it, those, those systems are not going to exist. And even if they do exist, they're not going to be able to plug in real money fast enough so how long will it take? I don't know, a few months. But in those in that aftermath, that's when you need your coins. Right. So we're talking about the transition period because it there doesn't seem to be any soft landing. There doesn't seem to be any any smooth transition in the cards. Never in history has a bubble deflated smoothly. It's never happened. Why would it happen this time? So they say like, oh, we're the guy. We're the ones who say, oh, now is different. No, we're really saying now is the same, except it's just bigger. 